if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I was an environmental reporter for a long time. And so I've been getting a lot of questions from people about what is the exact cause of the wildfires out West? Because like with many topics, it also has now become politicized. And so you'll hear some people talk about climate change as the only cause and that this impending apocalypse is upon us and we're all going to be dead in a few years. Or you'll hear people just talk about forest health, that we've been suppressing wildfires for the last century, and that's caused a buildup of fuel and unhealthy forests, which then leads to these catastrophically large wildfires. So I'm going to tackle this question today with a little bit of my background, but also with a professor of forestry at Oregon State University, John Bailey. And we're going to start with his fire triangle. It's topography, weather, and fuels. And of course, topography is somewhat stable. Uh, weather is, is just what you get. And as you aggregate weather together, that, that's what defines climate uh, and fuels. And fuels is really the only side of the triangle that we can actually man manipulate as humans. And fuels is a really important talking point when understanding wildfires right now, because we have been suppressing fires for a long time. And because we've been doing that in order to protect homes and because we had this really incorrect idea that fires were bad instead of a natural part of the landscape, we've allowed for forests to get really unhealthy. And we actually need to go back further than uh, just a, a couple hundred years. We can go back to the last glaciation and whatever Native American ancestors did because these landscapes evolved with fire as a very important part. So the ecosystems that are resistant and resilient to fire flowing through the landscape. And, and that created a, a very different uh, type of fuel matrix relative to, to what we have now. With Euro-American settlement, we introduced some heavy grazing practices. We brought in our human settlements and the infrastructure around them. We began to actively suppress fire and that excluded fire from the landscape because if you suppress it in one point. It doesn't flow across the landscape to, to burn other acres. Climate change does play a role, but what role exactly? Uh, so yes, there is a, a climate signal and that has a pretty you know direct impact on fire behavior because of temperature, air temperature and wind speed, but also fuel moistures, the length of the fire season that changes the probability that an ignition gets going at a certain time of year. Depending on where you are and what time of year, climate change versus forest health, these don't necessarily play equal roles in the problem of catastrophic wildfires. Temporal and spatial difference in you know, what what we blame you know for these tragedies is can be couched in the term of the actual weather conditions and how how strong were the winds and where were we in in the fire season and in those kinds of things uh, and and so there are uh, yeah, plenty, plenty of examples like like we were just talking about, where with you know with the uh, high wind events, the the fire is going to spread anyway, and and kind of following its own uh, you know forces and creating its own weather, you know even, uh, and and so in in those cases, it it becomes harder. Uh, to to blame the, the fuels, uh, so to speak. But there are other times when the weather conditions aren't that severe and the, the fire is propagating primarily because of the continuity and amount of fuel uh, that's in a particular area, or it's already gotten you know so big that it, we lo no longer have the workforce and the equipment that can contain it with, within some perimeter, you know, because of the fuels. Or we can blame the human human settlements. It's like, why did these people build out there? And, you know, all, all, why didn't they maintain their fuels and, and all that kind of stuff? But that's not always the case. And the ignition for fires is variable, but humans often play a large role in fire starting, whether intentionally or accidentally. It's the full range of hundreds of lightning strikes and those kinds of natural ignitions. Uh, to you know, or to arson, uh, to accidental uh, you know ignitions from campfires or vehicles, uh, to power lines. Of course, that's been a big one re you know recently, uh, and the power line issue is compounded by the high wind events as well. So there's an interesting interaction there. The people who are on the front lines of trying to reduce the number of catastrophic wildfires we're seeing are really trying to reduce the fuel load because that's what we can affect right now. And that can include everything from trimming the lower branches on trees to removing dead undergrowth to even doing prescribed burning, which basically means setting fire intentionally to the forest 
placed in areas that are controlled in order to remove that fuel load. I think the most important tool moving forward is going to be fire itself and you know following those chemical or mechanical applications of treatments, uh, following them up with prescribed burning, uh, you know, particularly to impact the fine surface fuel component out there. It's, it's an inexpensive tool. Um, it it uh, dis disposes uh, of the fuels uh, rather than just rearranging them uh, and creates an area that uh, is is less likely to burn or or burns under a smaller window of conditions. And this is something that we know as a as a firefighter that areas that burned last month or last year or five years ago, uh, that when when fire reaches those areas, it burns differently. And so we often designate those areas as our containment lines, our escape routes, our safety zones. And you know, fire firefighters know that and and use that when uh, when we have a a particular event. Uh, happening. Now, when a fire does burn the way that it has historically before we started suppressing wildfires and before these drier, longer fire seasons, actually fire played a really important role on our landscape. What are the benefits of a fire that is the way it should be? You know, it's not burning 250,000 acres in one day. What What does right. a healthy fire look like? And what yeah, does it so do? Right. This 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 healthy fire and, and what it does out there and what it what it did for thousands of years uh, prior to your American settlement is it kept the overall fuel matrix low. It recycles nutrients, helps build the soil in that sense. It changes the vegetation community. And so our Native American ancestors were using it not only to keep uh, fuels low, but also to pr promote uh, certain cultural plants and and animals, how the animals would respond to the, the plant communities that were being collected. So, you know, it, it manipulates the, the composition, the structure, uh, and the, the processing uh, of nutrients, and it impacts the water cycle, uh, you know, all, all of those things. It is a fundamental disturbance uh, factor out there. And so that that is the good side uh, and well beyond our more human centric view of just keeping the fuels down and making our community safer. The reason that it's really important to get politics out of this conversation and talk facts and logic when it comes to wildfires and forest health is because the more politics gets involved, the less quickly we are able to address the real problem. At some point, you know, you come together and you make progress rather than just continuing to posture and divide and all those kinds of things. And like coronavirus or like any other societal issue, if we're just gonna divide and and argue uh, and, and not resolve anything and not agree on our the common things that we would like to accomplish, then we'll continue to be a victim of wildfire rather than working towards the reality uh, that, that wildfire is gonna be part of our future and, and that we can actually do some things to better coexist with it. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that don't have a regular contact or opportunity to experience a healthy forest in this country, and they only see them when they're on fire and making lead stories on their six o'clock newscast. But forests are really important to our health, not just as humans, but also our wildlife and really just our ability to enjoy our communities. Our forests are uh, incredible resources. They Yes, their their timber and their their carbon and their fiber, uh, and all of the the money and the jobs and the economies that are behind that. But they're also you know the vast majority of our freshwater supply. They provide habitat and the the life structure for you know, our animal you know, uh, species that are out there. The endangered one, the charismatic ones, the ones we haven't even necessarily thought of yet. Uh, their amazing recreational opportunities and scenic value and and just spiritual value, but they're also fuel, and and you know they they are going to burn uh, out there. So, yeah, you know, we need to return to that memory uh, that while the forests, the shrublands, the grasslands are you know are all these things for us and a resource for us, uh, they also are 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 fuel. And so everything, uh, every way that we look at them, 
in everything that we do out there just needs to remember that they're fuels. And if we're going to build our homes, uh, you know, out in there, we just have to remember that that it is it is a, a wildfire risk. We're not always going to be able to put fire out. And, and so we need to have fire adapted communities in addition to resistant and resilient landscapes. So I hope this video helped you better understand the issue we're having with catastrophic wildfires, why forests are so important and why it's really important to keep them healthy and what we've learned over the years about how to do that. Again, I'm Allison Morrow. If you'd like to support my work, there are links in the description. There's PayPal, there's Patreon, but please just like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications when I upload new videos. Let me know what you thought and I'll see you next time.